My beloved pure heart was unlike any wand you've ever seen. Elgin, for find the perfect accessory for any cultured woman. You will bring it back to me, won't you? A priceless possession, callously ripped from the hands of its owner. The lady weeps, and the wind bears her sorrow to his ear. Her sorrow to his ears. What gentleman could hear this clarion call? Not beg the honor of championing her cause. What? What in the world? I swear to you, here and now, and she's just not giving any shits. She's probably seen this plenty of times. As I swear to you, here and now, I, Hillbrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinary, shall scour all of creation, from the deepest pits of hell to the very pinnacle of the heavens, for your pure heart. What he said. And you, my fellow servant of justice, so your instincts are not to be underestimated, having guided you uh, to this fair maiden side. Now then, Miss Moon, what can you tell us of the theft? Thefts are to be precise. My pure heart was only the most recent item to be taken from me. I, I'm certain. I'm certain I had it when I left home the other day. After I browsed the latest fashions of sun silk and took a, in a match at the Coliseum, I realized it was gone. So the time, location of thefts are known. Essential details, without which we cannot solve the case. There's but one logical course of action, Miss Moon. To coax the hidden clues from your memory, we must reenact that fateful day's excursion. To sun silk tapestries. Up, we'll just teleport around as much as possible. I really wish I could mount in here. The running is not nearly as fast as it would like. Oh, I don't know. Are you sure this is going to help? Also, okay, there's the assistant. Where are these crates coming from? They're just stalking us now. Miss Moon, would you be so kind as to describe your visit in detail on the day in question? An unusual happened, but if you insist, I was pondering on whether or not to purchase a new dress when a man approached me and confessed his undying love. What sort of man says that to a complete stranger, I ask you? Actually, I was taken aback. I dropped my purse in shock, not intentionally, on his foot. He cried out in pain and fled. If I may be so bold, Moon, that, uh, miss, uh, if I may be so bold, Miss Moon, that strikes me as the most unusual happening. In, in any case, it appears to be completely unrelated to the theft. Let us, <laughs> uh, let us proceed to the Galsim and see what you remember. Okay, down the road. Okay, we can talk to her this time. Hmm, that crate's looking, f uh, looking at me funny. Dot, dot, dot. The crate silence is emphasized. It's concerning. Where? <laughs> Where could my pure heart be? I'm sorry. <laughs> you get what you pay for. Uh, once again, Miss Moon, if you'd be so kind as to tell us what you remember. My life before an unusual happened. If I was gambling that day and was debating which match to observe, Gladiator approached me from behind and confessed his undying love. Match was taken aback. I whirled about and struck the man in my face in the face with my purse. In shock, in shock, not intentionally. You know she's injuring a lot of people via slapstick. I think she needs to stop carrying a purse. You know. Especially in this case. Unfortunately, since I was carrying a tremendous sum of money, my purse weighed about six score ponzes. Uh, 
Panzers? Mm, goddamn. And the bro was enough to knock him on. Uh, it was enough to render him unconscious. 120 Panzers? Miss Moon, you're a remarkably strong woman. Which is precisely why you were targeted. It's so obvious in hindsight. The T4 bore uh, you a grudge, not more than that. He hated you with a passion. There's sure, uh, there sure are a lot of giant crates in Oda. The Weaver's go, the sun silk tapestries, and here too. <laughs> Stand back! I'm on the verge of unraveling this mystery. Must be allowed to focus. These crates are everywhere, Drum Cran. Wonder what's inside. We don't see how we can open. Ah, of course! Still plenty of explosives. Here, why don't you try? It'll be fun! You know what? I'm liking you more by the minute. Many cope with grief by taking up new pursuits, just as travel or exercise. Ah, you. Choose to study explosives. Ah, a woman after me on heart. Their composure is admirable. Wow, there are people in there? Guess that explains the breathing and... Isn't that Yellow Moon's pure heart? Inspector, oh, Inspector, look! Oh, gods of mercy. It's over here. At the heart of every crime rests a single on a civil truth. Reached only by navigating a web of falsehoods and contradictions. Hearken to me now, for as a shepherd leads his flock, I shall guide you to my irrefutable conclusion. God Eater professes his feelings only to be rejected and fiscally assaulted in response, wounding his pride as a warrior and a man. Resenting her prowess while recognizing his weakness, he carries out a, mo a more feasible vengeance. He robs Yellow Moon of her weapon, the Pure Heart. Spectre, we found the Pure Heart. These strange men sneak around town and wooden crates at it. Not what you think. We're not thieves. We're devotees. Yellow Moon is her sun and stars. We only wish to keep her safe from harm. And should she misplace an item from time to time, we would collect it. For safekeeping, nothing untoward. You deviants were behind all the deaths. All this time you've been stalking me. What? What nerve? <laughs> ah! Such unbridled fury! Such righteous indignation! We should be glad to accept the goddess's punishment. Goddess, the uh, votees. Ah, but uh, but of course, uh, I that I had you inspect those crates was a stroke of genius indeed. As I was ill dating but a moment ago, those fiends were obviously the ones responsible for the recent rash of weapon thefts. As those thefts were carried out by a single individual, individual, you imbecile. At least you have uh, forgotten the culprit is a duelist. He only claims his victim's weapons after defeating him in single combat. Parts of observation was great as you claim, deduce that those buffoons in, cr in the boxes were incapable of such. I should know. I'm a reporter for the Mitchell Eye. My name is Ellie, and I've done investiga I've been investigating these incidents for weeks. Inspector Hillbrandt, gentleman, investigator, and agent of inquiry, I presume. Looking well for a dead man. Would you like to meet one of the duelist victims? I'll introduce you with pleasure. Be willing to share such precious information with me? Your generosity is commendable. Commendable, Miss Ellie. May this mark the beginning of a long and beautiful friendship. Yes, yes, very good. The name of the man is... Huh? Where in the bloody hells do you think you're going? I haven't told you anything yet. Uh, it, this is funny. Huh. They're very productive about street sweeping here. Having no other recourse... Oh, some filtered water. Uh, Ellie would instead tell you the identity of the victim. I suppose you're. I suppose since you're the imbecile's friend, you intend to help him. No, uh, unwilling. Uh, what would I even call myself? Unwilling hanger on. Mm. Eh. The 
man with you know popcorn wa on watching the shit show unfurl. Hoping to get, uh, hoping to tr throw around some more explosives. Mm. Uh, the man you want to find is an adventurer named Humphrey. At present, he can be found at Golden Bazaar. Look, the uh, good inspector may find his way there by the time you arrive. If not, then so be it. <laughs> Wonder what will happen when he discovers that the victim is a, is a perpetrator as well. Oh, really? This. There we go. All the way back to Camp Drybone. Oh my god. At least we're getting paid for like each of these steps, and it's more than enough to compensate. Uh, judging you to be a friend of the Inspector Hillbrand, Elio likes to share the identity of the weapon test victim with you. She mentions in passing that the man is also guilty for crime. Though she doesn't say what. Only that she's curious how the inspector will react when he learns of this fact. For now, seek out the adventure named Humphrey at the Golden Bazaar, where the inspector Hilbrand somehow finds his way to you. <laughs> he gets lost, confused, ends up getting hit by another meteor, and the quest chain starts all over again. Part of me was thinking it might be more worthwhile for me to do um, Grand Company laves, say if I'm going only after the um, ventures. It might be more worthwhile to do Grand Company laves than um, normal laves. Because normal laves, you know, only have the chance to give me ventures. But with the Grand Company things, I get currency that I can turn into ventures. I don't remember how much they cost. Now, uh, with a high enough level, I might get a venture per quest. Or I might be a twofer. Or uh, two quests to a venture. Hi, I'm Humphrey. And you are? At last I've caught up with you. You there, young sir. I'm told you're a victim of the marauding duelist. Me, a victim? <laughs> How amusing you are. You amuse me. True, I was challenged by the duelist not long ago. But where he taught to find a whelp? He found a warrior of light... A, a warrior, of, warrior of light instead. I, I defend my honor and my blade. See for yourself. You mean you won? That's amazing. Well, it was nothing compared to what I faced at uh, Carter now. Magitech to the right of us, Magitech to the left of us. Left, 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 I can't speak. Left of us, stuck in the middle with Master Wu. We were. Cor, he, he had a dab hand with the old magic. He, he was dab hand with the old magic he was. I tried to save him, of course, but just limited to how many giant beasts he's a man can. That man is no warrior of light. That's a nice outfit, though. Tell him, Elzar. Tell him how he was lost and surrendered his sword that was not his own. Uh, tell him how he lost and surrendered a sword that was not his own. Liar, scoundrel. Trusted that bastard with me father's blade. Bid him to take it to a smithy for restoration. Even gave him guild to pay for it. Then he comes crawling back, sniveling and begging for forgiveness for losing it in a duel. As if that's enough to set things right. Look at me, you bleeding Orson. Look at me. Me flowing gold locks no more. Gone bald with distress and heartbreak. I swear to heaven, holy, he'll face a reckoning if you don't bring her back to me. All right, all right. He bit the sh shite out of me and took the old man's sword. He used the guilt to pay the curmudgeon. No, not curmudgeon. It's the weird word they use for surgeon. Uh, I. No idea where he or the sword is. What am What am I supposed to do? I can't give him what I don't have, unless unless you help me find the sword. That's what you do, right? Help people. 
Have you no shame? Have you, uh, first you claim a legacy not your own. Uh, then you beg others to help you with problems of your own making. You will refuse this man, won't you, Inspector? What of Elzer is flung golden locks? How will forsaking young Humphrey help that m help the man he was r he was wronged? At first, we'll begin uh, our search for the sword by questioning the people of the Golden Bazaar. And then he walks off in the other direction. Do all inspectors dress like that? Never wet met one before, so I don't know what to expect. That bread was a rare and ancient relic. He can't possibly think he'll recover it so easily. Nothing? Nothing. Antique swords? Oh, I've been foggy about that. The traveling merchant, Jonapa, is the one you ought to speak with, assuming he hasn't left. That boy should be ashamed of himself, robbing poor elves of a priceless family heirloom. Just goes to show you, you never trust an avenger who claims to be a warrior of light. Tricksters and uh, thieves and tricksters, a lot of them. May not be the most honorable solution, but mayhap you should consider giving Elzer a counterfeit blade. If the deception brings him peace in his final days, would be so wrong. Uh. Elzer's sword? Not so much to look at, but at least it was authentic. More than a few collectors have been tricked into purchasing counterfeit relics. Did I feel no pain? Remember, remember that when you sli slice off one's head. I remember hearing a story of uh, an English queen. Um, she was, you know, being decapitated and she was saying a prayer. The story how old that her lips kept moving even after she was decapitated. Just for, you know, the briefest of moments, but yeah. That just came back to me. Um, I think she might have been the same one. Uh, her dog had actually snuck w along with her for the execution. It ended up seeing her go and refused to eat thereafter. It withered away, pining for her. <laughs> okay, if this guy isn't just going like the red eyes and the mustache, if this guy isn't a villain in its own arc, I'll be surprised. I'm afraid of no knowledge of an ancient sword. At least not one I, uh, not of one I can guarantee is to, uh, guaranteed to be authentic. You see, any wares I determine to be of dubious origins, I meet a discard in the spring east of Camp Drybone. Though I have no swords for sale at present, I may have disposed of a facsimile similar in design to the one you describe. This presents a quandary. Though I am willing to deceive an honourable man like Elzar, a well-intentioned ruse may put his heart at ease, thus spurring the rejuvenation of his phone golden locks, while we can continue to search for the genuine art article. Well, if there is a sword in, the, in that spring, it won't be there for long. It's one of the most convenient sources of fresh water for the common folk in Camp Drybone. Tisk tisk, you should endeavor to be more optimistic, Miss Ellie, like me. So we search the spring first, before declaring all to be lost. You just... Alright, that happened. So I was going to make a point. Are we going to ignore the guard trying to, like, sneak behind us? But uh, I'm guessing he's not part of the danger. Van Vandalorius? Imp? Well, that's a word. It's a lovely looking game, like seriously. And finally I've got an outfits that don't look like I'm gonna do a stripper gram. They act and they actually look cool. Send, uh... 
Curse to me that I'm absolutely, yeah, I'm not yet fully recovered from my accumulated injuries. I'll be prudent to immerse my body in water. Not without first coating it with a liberal application of salamander oil, that is. Indeed, on many an occasion, my dearest mother tended my childhood scrapes just so. You understand the importance of physical rehabilitation, yes? Then you can assist me by pouring oil all, all over my body. Uh, take sticky oil collected from the underbelly of a river dwelling salamander. Awkward enough, I have to do the same thing for your father. <laughs> ah, this comforting scent, as though I'm a child in her arms. Quickly now, before it dries. Knead the oil into my aching flesh. Ah, the re Ah, gah! The pain uh, multiplies manifold. Gently now, gently. Oh gods, oh gods, oh gods, yes, at last. My muscles slacken and soften. The warmth spreads and the pain becomes pleasure. <laughs> oh, okay, we help the man out. Right there, yes. Just keep yeah, keep doing that. Just like that. Just like groan. Yes. Now once more, what feeling? I can't help but read these lines in a like sexual implication sort of way, though that would. Uh, nah, it's not that. Ah, uh, never before I've received such splendid ministrations. Now then, into the spring. You as well, my good man. I spy with my inspector's eye. The uh, headset. Oh, and the reporter's here helping as well. Was she here previously, or did she just spawn in after I was done massaging him? Because he didn't see her there, but she might have been off to one side. You've been productive, excellent. May I see what you found? Uh, worthless bottle. This is not the sword you're looking for. Useless rock. Completely useless and an unremarkable rock. Come now, what were you expecting? Rock that keeps curls away. Uh, irrelevant, irrelevant pot shirt. Well, at least you didn't pick up a rock. A rock. Well, at least you didn't pick up a rock at random like some people. No son of the sword, John Johnapa mentioned. I see. Ah. Now I'm all wet. What was that anyway? <gasps> Cat girl's all wet. Oh, wet pussy joke here. Insert wet pu pussy joke here. Uh. Hmm. Did something cause you to? Once again, my instincts have guided us to our quarry. That I had you search that section of the spring was a stroke of of sneeze. Inspector, it's about for your house to conduct investigations in those clothes. Go to Alda and fetch you some new ones. How tall are you, Nashi? Uh, while you're there, purchase a few bottles of hair tonic for Elzar as well. The newest and most potent blend you can find. Is it not wonderful, my friend? Soon all of Elzar's woes will be no more.
here, one sec. And I'm back. Oh yeah, I forgot about the, uh... Then the guy is off on another mission. Ah, well. It'll be fine. I suppose in some way I can't be too productive about that. I'm not getting that many ventures uh, a play session. Baz uh, Bazaar Blood Triangle. You know, the Maj Raiders have forced its way into the Golden Bazaar in search of slaves and supplies. Aid the brass blades stationed in the hamlet in fending off the attackers. As promised, I return to you your father's ancient blade. Aye, it is her. Every chip and scratch just as I remember. God bless you, sir. I never expected you to go to such lengths for two strangers without thought of reward. Altruism, altru altru altruism is a rare trait these days. I cannot say that word. My English ability is kind of gone today. This is common enough if you know where to look. A gentleman recognizes the good in every soul and understands that none deserve to be forsaken. Spoken like a true gentleman, though your garments beg to differ. Inspector, I brought uh, uh, your change of clothing. I also bought a supply of tonic from this peddler I met in Pearl Lane. Excellent work, Nashu. You would just bring, uh, bring me that case. Inspector? Inspector Hillbrand? There appears to be something lodged in my forehead. Could it be a missive from an adoring admirer? <laughs> this is funny, but at the same time, this is actually really frustrating how just stupid everyone, that the two of them are. Well, him especially. Uh, it's. This kind of character always kind of irritates me. It can be funny, but it irritates me at the same time. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> okay, I really need to see the animation of him plucking out again. I was distracted by the old man and his glowy scalp. Hmm. The order neglected to pen her name, so come to claim the collector's blade. Is that supposed to be flattering? <laughs> no, no, not that way, Hildebrand. Hildebrand. No, you. It's uh, it's supposed to be intimidating. The duelist wrote this. He's daring you to stop him. <laughs> Suddenly, I feel very uncomfortable. I do not feel safe in this room. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of expression, like that, that, oh god, <laughs> a challenge for me, oh, a uh ho, at the last the curtain rises. Very well, if I'm to do with the duelist, I must dress for the occasion. Okay, that's a better grin. <laughs> I, Hillbrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, accept your challenge. He's, he's incredible, so bold, so majestic, just like a warrior of light. Now 
No. A gentleman of light. <laughs> He's exceptionally something. Gore! Inspector Hillbrand! You look amazing! I see uh, Hillbrand's transformation sequence there uh, has denied this guy's graphics. Hildebrand. It's too much for the world to bear. And the tonic hair tonic did actually work. <laughs> hmm, nice armor. This is far from the strongest of sorts. Ah! Oh. Gilgam uh, Gilgamesh. That's, it, I had been thinking of him, but I didn't think he would turn up here. I figured he would turn up elsewhere. This is Gilgamesh, right? For some reason, my mind keeps quite thinking of Gargamel, but that's something else. That's like the Smurf villain. Blue, blue skies in the rolling desert. How much longer must I seek the Blade of Legend? Enough expositionary dialogue! Now we fight like men! Like women! Like women that dress like men! For Gilgamesh, it is morphing time! Apparently that's a line he says in... <laughs> Challenge accepted, my worthy opponent. You shall not claim the blade. Uh, with my... let us... call it what it is, genius? Uh, wait, you wish to do with weapons, not wits? The bridge hardly seems appropriate for such an epic battle. Oh, the brand will return in the tree collectors. <laughs> hey, I know that spear. That's the one I found buried with the pumpkins. Pumpkins? <laughs> sort of reminds me of... Huh. No, it's gone. Never mind. Huh. See, I guess she changed back. Also, wait. Two bottles of filtered water. Given the, the, how, how random of a roar that is, I guess. Mm. Like, uh, there, it was the bottles the old man got. They were a knockoff, but yet still somehow worked. Uh, I suppose that's the uh, presence of the uh, gentleman of light for you. How he wishes to share our latest discoveries with you. But that was a fantastic little bit there. Like, seriously, that's hysterical. But perchance you ha you're curious what the duelists declare a target. If this so happens, I have identified the weapon in question. The Treaty Blade is part of an Ishgardian noble's collection, or was, I should say. No, it hasn't been stolen yet. It was purchased by an old end collector the wife of a wealthy merchant living in Vesper Bay. Suffice to say, I'll be remiss in my duties as a reporter were I not to investigate her. And should they do, do a strike while I'm present, well, I hope I needn't explain what golden opportunity that would be. Ingratiating myself to her may prove to be a greatest challenge, though. I'm told she's a difficult woman to please. Fortunately, I'm told she has a fondness for rare flowers. The sort to two see in Camp Drybone cells. You can come along if you like.
Here you are, miss. Thank you for your patronage. W uh, was it for love or money that you killed him? It... It was you? I've forgotten mad. That was an Amadra arrow in his back. I don't even know how they shoot a bow. Amadra don't shoot fleeing unarmed merchants. They capture and temper them. Not that you or your victim make for convincing merchants. If you're going to misrepresent yourself, put some effort into it. Wear gloves for God's sake. Or at least don't wave your hands in front of my face. The calluses on your fingers betray you as a veteran archer. Doubtless you used your skills to great effect five years ago, as did your partner. So again I ask, was it because he took from you your share or your sister? You don't uh, touch a man's kin. He knew that and yet he... He... Damn. I, t uh, I thought he did it for the money. You two, he's all yours. Y yes, of course. Thank you for your help, Inspector. At least he's competent. But when did investigating crimes become such a popular profession? It's not his job, you know. He just likes doing it. He belongs to one of Ishgard's high houses. Some say he's a baron. Not at all like that buffoon Hildebrand, don't you think? I'll try not to think about Hildebrand. We should get going. Lady Dorilda will not take kindly to wilted flowers. Yet again, I have to make this trip here. Damn this syndicate! A pox upon thee! Oh, rocks! The time. Greatest story never told. Never noticed this before. Valiant Heart. Uh, the realm of Aorzi is filled with countless mysteries, but there is only one which Valiant Heart wishes to solve. Um, elements, wheels, bah, it's gibberish. Utter gibberish. Gasp as I live and breathe, a warrior of light, and seen your like in years. Uh, since bloody cart now, certainly. I see you refuse to confirm or deny my assessment. Keeping low profile, are we? Very well. I shall speak of this to no one. By the by, my name is Valiantheart. A pleasure to me uh, meet you, sir. Ah, look at us. Two veterans burdened with experiences beyond the common man's ken. I say we should be friends, you and I. To that end, I shall share with you the re my reason for being here, and in doing so, deepen our bond. Tell me, have you heard of w Winebout? He was an explorer of some renown ten years ago, though he regret regretfully retired and passed on not long ago. It is said he discovered a treasure worth 100 million gil. That's right, 100 million gil. Uh, Wanbald uh, called it the most precious secret of Lalafuto III, who was Sultan of Veladia some 700 years ago. Just think we might, what we might do with such a treasure. I, I say we, for should you aid me in my search, will gladly share the spoils. What say you? Should you choose to undertake this quest, you'll receive no guidance from the journal or the duty list. You need to re re uh, read the text carefully and decipher the clues to determine your next course of action. Moreover, it may be unwise to rely on other ventures for assistance, as their clues and objectives may differ from yours. The path your quest may take and the rewards you may receive are unknown. Yet knowing this, will you follow in the steps of Weinbaud and seek out the treasures of Alfuto Turd? Yes. Of course you will. What? Uh, only a great fool will turn its back on phenomenal wealth and everlasting glory. Now then, to the task at hand. Upon this statue of the Sun King is written a message, left to us by Weinbaud himself, which I believe will lead us uh, to the treasure. Alas, it is encoded, and deciphering it is no small feat. See for yourself. I've only finished the first pa passage. What's worse, the contents are non unintelligible. It appears to be a riddle, but beyond that I cannot say. So it turn to you. If you if you solve the riddles I decipher, then together we can claim the treasure of Laofuto. 
uh, deterred. A simple arrangement, yes? Then uh, let us begin, uh, begin at once. What could the statue for the first riddle? Carved upon the statue is a series of strange characters. Next to them, written in chalk, we find Valiant Heart's translation. Ren, Flo, Spy, Tel, Z, Re, Fire, Lightning, Water, Earth, Ice, and Wind. The wheel must turn anew. Tomatology summoned one of their own from the Austri to inspect this message when it was first found, came and went uh, in less than a bell, having determined at a glance that it was in the Baldean in origin. Yet the treasure we seek belongs to a Baldean Sultan. There must be a reason why Wanbald chose to mark this statue. That fellow, Yaya Ruk, was his name I believe, may have insight into this riddle. Ah, ghost of Amnipur. I have no idea where that person is. Okay, yeah, they they literally are just in the ossuary. Nedric Arnard has information that is certain to set your horse rate to racing. If you don't mind my saying, it seems you've been wanting for a stimulation of late. Ah, uh, the air of torpor about you is quite palpable. Ventures are next, to, uh, next of kin to adventures, my friend. I guess you need regular doses of excitement, else you shrivel up and die. I'd hate to see that happen to you, so I'll tell you of a place that will set your horse, set, truly set your horse rate. I'm the poor keep. There's a ruined fortress situated in the South Shroud, dating back to the Fifth Astral Era. Uh, if the thought of delving into the past sets your lines of fire, the gate will surely s serve to quench it. The entrance is watched by a woodwiller named Maxine. Give her my name and she will tell you all you need to know. Nedrick really has uh, friends everywhere, doesn't he? Far be it from me to brag, but the blood of adventurers courses through my veins. My grandpapa drafted the first comprehensive map of Eorzea, and I've made my life's work to revise it to reflect the changes brought about by the cal calamity. To this end, I've travelled all, all over Eorzea. There's not any place in the realm that I've not seen with my own eyes. Mayhap I could direct you to some of the more interesting locales I've explored. That is, if you're not afraid of a little danger. Oh, no wonder. His grandfather made the first comprehensive map and he's updating it. It's, you know, it's a... storied legacy. You have business with me, adventurer? I'm the harbor master. Uh, okay, good for you. 